I'm Ivor the spider with a new tale to tell. Here I am in the hole of a tree. Woodpeckers eat grubs, ants and spiders as well. This tree is no place for me. Both woodpeckers thought that they'd nest in this tree, but they're wondering now if they should. The opening's rough, with sharp edges that cut. No, they don't think that hole's any good. Says Mr. to Mrs. Will this hole do? Here's where I sleep every night. Says Mrs. It's small, just big enough for you. But the starling thinks it looks just right. They work through the day and they work through the night, pecking a hole in that tree. The eggs will be laid where they're well out of sight of you humans, not spiders like me. They prefer rotten trees such as these. To dig a hole in the wood won't take long. And the chicks need to grow in a hole that is big, so there's less chance of things going wrong. Mother has laid all her eggs in the nest as the father homeward flies. What's that in his sleeping hole? Haven't you guessed? My hole's full of starlings, he cries. The chicks look so helpless, waiting for food. They've hatched out in the nest, now it's spring. They'll eat up the grubs, already half-chewed, which their parents dutifully bring. Hmm, we can't cut that tree down. There's a woodpecker's nest, a woodman exclaims with a frown. Let's wait till they've flown away. That'll be best. Though, in a storm, that tree may blow down. Struck by lightning, it's broken in two. It looks like the chicks are all dead. The mother can't see them. What, what can she do? There's a sound, though, from up over her head. There they are. They're all safe and fully grown. One last grub, and they must try to fly. That old tree can be felled, now that they've all flown. What a lot of noise. I'll go now. Goodbye. Hello, I'm a spider. 
my name is Ivor. I'm Ivor the spider to you. I'm tiny, I'm Ivor, the tiniest spider, the teller of tales that are true. Look, look, there's a crab with a body so weak, he keeps it enclosed in a shell. From deep in his shell, his stalky eyes peek, all of which suits him quite well. The crab's name is Horace, his sister's called Doris. Together, they snip off the weed. Snippity snipper snap, says Horace to Doris, as the anemones greedily feed. There's a strange thing, says Horace out loud, as an octopus slithers around. I'm done for, he wails, no longer so proud, as he falls, then hides in the ground. This angers the octopus, hungry for dinner, looking round rocks and down cracks. And here's danger again. I see an eye and a fin. To fish, crabs are tastiest of snacks. I want my shell back, says the crab, feeling brave. As he trundles along to the shore, I don't care what happens, I'll just try and save my shell from that rubber. What can I do more? Excuse me, says Horace, would you like a ride to this anemone perched up above? If you can help me, then I'll be your guide, and I'll aim it slips like a glove. Should the octopus try and eat you, I promise to give him a sting. And from then on he won't want to meet you, he'll think you a big stinging thing. We did it! shouts Horace with glee, then boasting says, no thanks to you. And look, there's our Doris, just there, can't you see? And she's got an anemone too! And that's my tale over, there's no more to tell. Oh, the crabs moved to Dover, where they're happy and well.